Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we're going to be providing an update on Gain Therapeutics. They just came out with some huge news in relation to their lead drug candidate, and we've welcomed the CEO back on the channel to give us an update on his organization. Now before we get into all that, please take a second, hit the like button you guys, it's a big help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let me know in the comment section below if you're currently holding shares of Gain Therapeutics, what your outlook is for this company, and your thoughts on this recent development or big news that just came out. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Hey guys, so that's right. Today's video, we've welcomed back Matthias Alder, who's the CEO of Gain Therapeutics. There's been some big developments over the last month since we were joined by Matthias, and we wanted to talk about some of these developments as it relates to the company and give a heads up to any of the viewers who are following this stock. So Matthias, thanks so much for being with us today and looking forward to the discussion. Uh, thanks, Bryce, and thanks for having me again. Looking forward to giving everybody an update. Great progress, as you mentioned. Yeah, you're most welcome. Uh, you're most welcome on the channel at any point here. So for people who maybe missed our initial chat again about a month ago, I would encourage you guys to go back and take a look. Can you give us just a quick high level summary of what Gain Therapeutics is all about? Absolutely. So uh, Gain Therapeutics is a clinical stage biotech company started out at its core really as a computational drug discovery company. So this new field of accelerating uh, drug discovery through uh, AI and computational means, uh, computational models. And we have this, our proprietary platform that allows us to generate highly differentiated first in class uh, uh, drug candidates. And the first one of these of our pipeline that we have generated with with this platform is one of those differentiated drug candidates that has now just started uh, uh, clinical uh, trials. So moving from into a clinical trial right now. So it's a uh, it, it's a validated platform and we can talk a bit more about the progress we've made with it with the lead program today. Sure, I'm looking forward to it. I, I got a kick out of the uh, AI being in the name Gain Therapeutics. So G-A-I yes. and um, and obviously AI is a big, uh, big uh, part of the market right now. A lot of hype around it. A lot of investors looking for ways to incorporate it into their portfolio. So if I'm correct here, Matthias, uh, a couple days after our last interview, you actually got the approval to enter clinical trials. And then just recently here, you've actually started to dose your initial patients. Is that correct? So two separate kind of catalysts there. Uh, absolutely. And that's just now, that's the great thing about being now in the clinic because we're going to have a number of these milestones that we can now can start uh, taking off and a big focus on, on execution. So the, the lead program uh, that we developed is in, in GBA1 uh, Parkinson's disease. And, and we just um, started the, the dosing uh, in, in, in this clinic, the first clinical trial that we're running as, 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 as a company. And so it's a major transition point for us as a company, both moving from preclinical stage to now being a clinical stage. A biotech company, it's a major transition point for the actual program, getting into patients now, into humans actually for the first time. And it's a, it's actually a major point of validation also for the platform where we now have demonstrated that it's not just a theoretical exercise, you know, in silico and virtual, or we can actually provide, uh, you know, develop, generate very tangible and valuable drug candidates with this platform. So on all fronts, a uh, major transition point of progress for us as a company. It, it really is. And we were talking before we flipped on the camera here about taking it from a concept or an idea now the, to something physical and, and proof there uh, in the clinical trials. So congratulations. And um, you mentioned it, it goes uh, or focuses on Parkinson. Can you explain how this drug candidate actually works? Uh, yes. So it's actually, it, it, it's a really exciting uh, a program that we have because it is a product that has the potential to slow or even stop the progression of Parkinson's disease. And right now in Parkinson's, there's only symptomatic treatments. And so patients, you can, Parkinson's is essentially a movement disorder. And so people start developing tremors and stiffness of limbs and that gets progressively worse until patients need 
24 hour care because they cannot feed themselves anymore. Um, and so what we have here with our drug candidate is, is a molecule that has the potential to, as I said, disease, have a disease modifying effect in terms of slowing or even potentially stopping the progression um, of the disease. And the way it works is that we're working on binding to a, a, a protein that if it doesn't work properly, uh, ultimately leads to a, a cascade of events in a cell that leads to the death of dopamine producing brain cells. And as a result of the death of these brain cells, dopamine levels drop and the patients start to develop the symptoms of, of Parkinson's disease. And what we have with our, with, in, with our drug candidate is, is a, a molecule that binds to that, uh, that protein and is able to restore the function of, of that protein such that, that the whole disease cascade is actually stopped at the very beginning. Before all the bad things happen, we can stop that, 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 that disease cascade. Um, and as a result, we have actually shown preclinically that we have uh, the ability to protect these dopamine producing brain cells from dying off that we have an increase of dopamine levels in the brains of the test animals and we have had this the impact then the improvement of the locomotion deficits that these animals have so we preclinically we've established the entire disease mechanism and the, the, the ability to actually improve on all parameters of that disease cascade which is very differentiated from anything else that's out there or currently in development Gotcha. And I appreciate the explanation because it is a very complex uh, solution and disease and obviously a big addressable market for, for people suffering from Parkinson's. Um, so I appreciate the explanation there. Now, you mentioned a little bit earlier this, this serves as a major kind of turning point or milestone for the company moving into clinical trials. Um, what does it actually mean from, from an investor or a viewer standpoint for Gain Therapeutics now that you've got this in clinical trials? Yeah. Well, I think it's obviously now, you know, having most drugs actually in that are be, that are starting out in sort of drug discovery and development, they fail in the preclinical phase and they turn out not to to work or are in animal models too 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 toxic and ultimately you can't take into humans. And so for us, we've mm, mm, met all these these thresholds and endpoints in in the preclinical work that we had to do leading up now to, to the start of the, the first uh, clinical trial in, in humans. And so that in and of itself is a major de-risking step for, for the program. And, and now that we are in the clinic, it's a lot about is now about execution. So we're going to have a number of, of, of uh, so inflection points during the course of this clinical program that we're running that will uh, further de-risk the program and provide evidence that the drug actually works as we have seen preclinically that it also works in humans and obviously as being a uh, in in the pharmaceutical field that's ultimately what you need to achieve right with with a company and, and a drug program sure so um, we've covered quite a few biotech and pharmaceutical companies on the channel and I know uh, the drug development pipeline is is a number of stages so what should people keep an eye on as kind of the next milestone in uh, in this right. progression? Right. So we are now in that phase one clinical trial. Uh, those the first uh, two subjects. It's in healthy volunteers actually, so not yet in patients because we are in Parkinson's disease. That's the normal drug development process. You go to healthy volunteers and make sure that the drug is actually safe uh, in humans. We don't really have any concerns based on the preclinical work that we have done in animals, but still you have to prove it also in humans. But as we are progressing through this phase one clinical trial, there's a number of very important readouts. So the first part of that of the clinical trial is a single ascending dose phase where we're, uh, each the patients receive, uh, the subjects receive uh, a do one dose of, of the drug and we're increasing dose levels and uh, doing that, we're obviously able to see how far up we can go before uh, uh, these uh, humans start to exhibit uh, potentially, you know, adverse events and things like that. We expect we don't expect any, but still you have to test it out. And that first phase uh, is going to uh, complete at the end of this year, 
and we're going to be able to announce the fact that we have now passed the single and ascending dose phase and are moving into the next part of the clinical trial, which is a multiple ascending dose phase. In that phase, we're testing the, uh, the subjects for 14 days. So they're receiving the drug for 14 days. And so we're looking at, uh, at that point in, in that phase, not just at the safety of the drug, but also at sort of the, how the drug is absorbed uh, over a period of time in the human body, which then will allow us to correlate that information to the efficacious dose levels that we have seen in animals to see that we can actually reach efficacious dose levels in humans um, as well. In addition, um, what we'll be looking at in, in these patients, treating them for 14 days is engagement with the protein target, which is called GK. So it's the target of the small molecule, that's where it binds to. And uh, what we have shown preclinically, which is very important, is that we're able to increase the level of of that uh, protein in 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 the test animals increase the levels and increasing the activity of that protein, which is ultimately what we also want to show in patients. But being able to show that and we can test for that as a biomarker already in the healthy volunteers is going to give the first indication that the drug actually works as as expected. And that's going to come up towards the mid that that information will have towards the middle of of 24 so within the next nine months great yeah definitely some big uh catalysts on the horizon and i look forward to having you on kind of at each step to to keep us apprised um now my next question for you uh as i understand it this proprietary kind of ai screening allows you guys to really run a, a huge number of potential candidates compared to the older more traditional model so in terms of other candidates or other potential platforms you're working on, what should we keep an eye on there? Well, we have a, a, a very extensive pipeline. The great thing about the platform is we can create new programs at will almost and very cheaply. The next wave of products that we're pushing forward is actually in oncology. And uh, in oncology, where we're looking at the it's a protein targets that are validated. So there's already existing drugs against these proteins that, that cause uh, different types of cancer. And, and with our approach and the way we're binding to finding new ways to engage with these proteins, we have the ability to find new therapies against validated drug targets that have the ability to uh, treat patients once they progress on existing therapy. You know, cancer oncology has seen a tremendous progress over the, the past 20 years or so, but still, and yet uh, most uh, patients that receive therapy uh, that it, that's currently on the market, eventually the, the cancer evolves around that existing therapy and they progress and, and need further treatment. And with our platform, we can find new ways to treat these patients once they progress on existing therapy um, and treat them with our new novel way and the differentiated chemistry that we can generate with our platform. And so that creates a you know great hope for these uh, patients who without you know, the, the progress that we can achieve with our drug development programs, they would really have no hope and just end up end up um, passing away from the disease. And so it's, it's a very important work. Uh, it's early on, but we expect that we can get the first in vivo proof of concept uh, from one or two of these uh, oncology programs over the next six to nine months as well. And that is already, again, a major major progress, major, major inflection point for the platform showing the ability to address different diseases, but also having an effect efficacious therapy uh, in against validated drug targets. Yeah, it's incredible you guys can pivot that quick. And I'm glad you brought up um, oncology and, and you're focusing there. Unfortunately, my wife's father, so my father in law just passed away last year of cancer. And and being involved in this space, I, I meet with a lot of CEOs and it does feel like there, there is tremendous progress there. But um, a lot of times when you're looking at these companies, you're talking about numbers or money or statistics. And at the end of the day, it, it really is people's lives that you guys are changing. So um, right. very exciting. And I always like to tie it back to that human element because we all know someone who's, who's unfortunately suffered from these, right? So um, right. anyways, back to the interview here, Mateus. Uh, now, 
obviously a lot going on. There's a lot to be excited about. You guys are really firing on all cylinders from, from my perspective. What would you say is kind of a number one focus right now um, for Gain Therapeutics? Uh, definitely execution uh, of, of that phase one clinical trial. It's the, the main primary value driver for us right now. And being able to hit the milestones the way I just played them out. We've been very successful so to, to actually hit the milestones I uh, previously announced in terms of getting the submission in for the, the start of the clinical trial, starting the clinical trial, and now it's actually executing and continuing to hit these milestones and the timelines that we are that we're laying out for our shareholders. And so that's going to be requiring a lot of attention to actually make sure that everybody is aligned and, and we continue to hit uh, on all cylinders as we're running through that a clinical trial and generating this very important data that will create significant value inflection points over the next 12 months. Perfect. And I know you mentioned the end of the year as kind of the first inflection point and then the middle of 2024. So yep. I've got those dates stored. Uh, we'll keep you accountable. We'll have you back here and, and you'll have to answer if you hit them or not. Um, Absolutely. Great. Uh, now to close out, um, any final thoughts or, or kind of closing statements as to why people should, uh, should take a look at Gain Therapeutics as an investment? I think it, it ties back to what you mentioned, that this is all about uh, people, about patients and their families. And the diseases that we're addressing now, in looking at the Parkinson's disease, um, first of all, right now, these patients, and that, now that we've moved into clinical into a clinical trial, we've been inundated with calls and, and emails from patients who are saying, how can I participate? How can I help? Um, you know, these patients currently do not have any any therapy that stops that disease progression. So they know they have the disease and they know eventually, even though the current symptomatic treatments work for a while, eventually they're going to fall off the, off the cliff at the end. And so having this hope that we have in our program to stop that, slow or stop the progression of that disease is, is very important. And so I think from an investor perspective, uh, we are a company, you know, trading at quite a low market cap, you know, relative to the value that's actually inherent in the in the lead program that we have. So it's a great time to actually look at the company and really participate in that journey and the value inflection points as we're moving this program forward, and develop that therapy that ultimately can stop the progression of the disease for patients who are right now don't have any hope uh, of achieving that. And so it's it's a very important mission that we have as a company. And we are uh, always looking to uh, for support from shareholders and investors to help us along uh, on, on that path to achieve that goal. Very well said. And I like that as, as a closing uh, statement there. It's all about hope. So uh, Matthias, thanks so much for taking the time to, to give us this update and join us today. We look forward to hearing from you again as, as we continue to track this story and hit these inflection points. And uh, thanks for, for joining us. Thank you, Bryce. Happy T to be here. Take care.